Good morning, everybody, <clears throat> and a very warm welcome to you today on Monday, the 4th of May. We're still in Easter season, and it's morning prayer. So I'm delighted that you've been able to join us, and I hope that you are all well. Um, so as we gather together this morning, slightly overcast, but let's hope and pray that the rain will stay off for the course of our service. So as we gather together, we hold a moment's quiet as we draw ourselves into God's presence in our beautiful creation. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. God has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us, let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And psalm, appointed psalm for today, is Psalm 103. And the, the refrain is, The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are repressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. 
as far as the east is from the west. So far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures for ever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, and hearken to the voice of, the, of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Merciful God, as we come from dust and return to dust, show us the face of our Redeemer, that in our frailty we may bless your name and praise you all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 to 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know where he, what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mould, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to, re to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel. You brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, 
it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for our canticle this morning. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God, whom I will praise, the God of my forebears, whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invisible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. And a reading this morning taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to the end. Now, every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travellers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him amongst their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard them were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you. In great anxiety, he said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he, had to, what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound, 
and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? And now, Fra Benedictus, so we say together. Blessed are those who have persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. And now for our time of prayer together. And I'm using a book this morning by Susan Sayers, Intercessions for the Church Year. So as we just reflect upon the weekend that's been, giving thanks for this time, time to worship, to worship freely, remaining ever mindful of those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for unity among all who follow the way of Christ, that in keeping our eyes fixed on him, we may be enabled to dissolve barriers, to forgive and to be reconciled through the healing power of accepting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray at this time and particularly for our government and for all in positions of responsibility and leadership. That's both internationally for the WHO and all that they're doing, for our government and the decisions that they're making with respect to lockdown and some of the tough questions they have to resolve in getting our country and economy back onto its feet, remaining ever mindful that this virus is still very present. We pray for our own community, wherever we may be, for our city here of Canterbury, for our council, for all those who are working tirelessly behind the scenes. We pray that they may themselves be led by your spirit to make wise decisions and help create a humane and caring world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
We pray at this difficult time for our homes and families with all their own hopes and sorrows, difficulties and celebrations, that all relationships may be bathed in your love and compassion, O Lord. And we just hold a moment's quiet and lift to the Lord those known to us and our families and friends who may be struggling at this time, struggling with their health, struggling with loneliness, struggling with financial difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who incite others to antisocial criminal behaviour, for all involved in drug trafficking. And we pray that they may open their hearts and allow you to transform and heal. For the weak, lonely, young and depressed, who, particularly at this time, are so vulnerable to their temptations, and give them help and strength to resist the pressures on and around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit. We name them out aloud at home or on our hearts. Those known to us who may be in hospital or ill at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray that those who've died in faith may be welcomed into the eternal joy of heaven to live with you forever. We thank you for all the richness of this beautiful world, for the gift of life and time to spend here and for the example and companionship of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for today, and the collects particularly for those martyrs who've given their life down the years for England. Merciful God, who, when your church on earth was torn apart by the ravages of sin, raised up men and women in this land, who witnessed to their faith with courage and constancy, give to your church that peace which is your will, and grant that those who've been divided on earth may be reconciled in heaven and share together in the vision of your glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. And now we just enjoy a little bit of bird song. It's lovely that you are able to join us this morning for morning prayer. If you are able to join us for Compline at 7 this evening, that would be lovely. Um, otherwise, I hope that you have a good day. As ever, keep connected, keep praying, and keep safe. God bless you all, and see you again tomorrow, hopefully at 9 o'clock. Let's hope we can be outside. God bless you all. Bye-bye now.